Hey, what's going on guys? Alex Mazukin here from Mr. Build It. Welcome back to uh, yet another week in the workshop. If you're brand new to the channel, welcome. We put out videos weekly of DIY projects, builds, tutorials, reviews, the whole shebang. So if that's something that you're into, make sure you hit that subscribe button, tap that notification bell, that way you know when these videos come out. So the topic of today's build is taking a timeless, a classic build like a farmhouse dining table and giving a little bit more of a modern look, the modern approach. So without wasting any time, I present to you my version of the modern farmhouse table. Let's get into the video. Let's go. To get started, we picked up two by six by eight full long boards from a local hardware store. Then we started the milling process. We cleaned up the edge to make sure it's straight, then the face of the board, and then threw it on the thickness planer, followed by the table saw to get it to our absolute finished dimensions. Once our boards were ready to work with, we decided to start the glue up process. For the glue up process, we broke it down into two separate parts, three boards at a time, mostly because my clamps don't extend as far. Once they were dry, I then brought the entire two pieces together, creating the entire table using the two clamps that would work as extenders. Let it sit overnight, and then we're ready for the hard work. The next day, I removed all the clamps from our tabletop, and I decided to start hiding all the knots that are found on the Douglas fir wood species. So I picked up this five minute epoxy, mixed it up, and poured it into each individual knot. Sometimes even any imperfections that are left from the planer, that would get a little bit of epoxy as well. Now, even though they call it five minute epoxy, I would give it at least an hour or two to dry, mostly because you don't want it to gunk up all of your 80 and 120 grit sandpaper. Instead, be nice and hard and that way easy to sand. Now to get started on our breadboards, we wanted to clean up our ends. So I took a nice clean straight edge, created a nice square line and then took my track saw. And if you don't have a track saw, you can just simply just clamp one by three board and a skill saw and accomplish the exact same maneuver. This is just way faster. Now it's time to create the important part of the tabletop are the breadboard ends. The breadboards kind of work in a couple of different reasons. Number one, aesthetically appealing end caps, but more than that, they're made for to prevent the table from warping and allow for wood movement. So the approach that I'm taking here is a mortise and tenon approach. I'm using my Festool Domino to create these through mortises all on the breadboard end and the tabletop ends themselves. The ones on the tabletop are gonna be loose, the one on the breadboard side are gonna be tight. The one on the tight breadboard side are gonna have tenants going in, fixated with wood glue, and the ones on the tabletop itself, the loose ones, are only gonna have one center part that's actually gonna be glued. Everything else is gonna have through dowels coming down. Once everything is set, I then extended a few different clamps and secured everything in place. Once the breadboard ends were clamped on, it was time to lock them in place. So to do so, I found exactly where the tenons were going through, and I took a half inch Forstner bit, went all the way through that tenon, laid down a little bit of masking tape to keep the area clean, took a half inch dowel, I believe mine are oak, covered it with wood glue, and installed it in place. Once that was dry, I then took a flush cut saw and trimmed it to size. Then it was time to clean the area up. To wrap things up on our tabletop, I used a circular saw to chop off and clean up all the excess breadboard ends to keep it flush with the table. Then I took my sander with 80 grit to 120 to 220 grit, cleaning up the entire tabletop, the edges, and especially blending the dowels down with the breadboard ends. Once that was finished, I took my palm router with a 3 8 roundover bit and I grooved out all the edges to make them as smooth as possible, getting ready for the finish. When it comes to applying finish, Douglas fir and pine tend to be pretty blotchy when it comes to applying stain. So to prevent that, I use a pre-stain. This is particular time I'm using a product from Verithane. I applied it with a sponge brush. That's usually my go-to method. I let it sit for 30 to 45 minutes before wiping off all the excess with a rag. Once the pre-stain is ready for the actual stain, I apply the stain using the same method, a sponge brush. This is a product from Minwax. It's a color called Weathered Oak. One of my personal favorites, very subtle. To get the exact color that you're looking for, I usually apply one to three coats, let it sit for about two minutes, and then wipe off all the excess with a rag. Then I let it just dry and cure and do whatever it needs to do. Now, while that does do that, I'm gonna go build me some metal legs.
After we're done welding, right before we lay down the paint, I use acetone on a rag to clean the metal um, and to give it as bare surface area as I can. It's usually covered in grease from the steel shop to keep it from corrosion, and so this gives you the best opportunity to have the best paint job. So for paint, I'm using a paint and primer from Krylon. It's an automotive acrylic enamel. It's white. It sprays very well, but being metal, be very careful to watch those runoffs. Now, when it comes to installing the tabletop to the table base and uh, using a panel glue up kind of system, you always want to consider wood movement. Wood will move whether it's hot or cold, warm, dry, humid, not humid. So what you want to do is kind of give it the best opportunity to move without being loose on your table. So the way I do it is you typically create a larger hole on the table base itself. Keep the slot or the hole on the tabletop itself very snug. And then the screws that I use will have a washer. The washer will keep the screw from coming out of the large hole, allowing for it to move on the table base itself and keeping the tabletop snug. So that's my approach. There's a couple other little hardware pieces you can buy, but this works very well. And of course, to wrap things up, I finish it off with about five coats of clear coat polyurethane, water-based stuff, and it's ready for serving. Well, that is it for me this week. Thank you so much for watching these videos, guys. It does mean the world to me. Make sure you comment down below. Give me your opinions about this. Welding, is this something you know how to do? Is something you've actually been thinking about getting into? If so, let me know. I'll like to make a little bit better tutorial of how to weld. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, tap that notification bell, comment, share this video with your friends on Facebook and everywhere else. Tune in out this week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.